Hello there, I'm Jachi Sanchez, the VR Citizen, and in today's video, I show you everything you need to know about Virtual Desktop. But first, I'd like to apologize for how poorly my last Quest 3 video connection guide went. Guys, I have four different PCs across 15 years of gaming, all with different sets of hardware and have been building and fixing computers and doing IT work all my life. I thought at least one of these PCs, I would be able to get a Wi-Fi connection to work. None of them did. When I say that the meta software is awful, I'm not the only one saying it. However, that doesn't excuse my lack of information for those trying to seek it on the topic of meta software only connections. For that, I apologize. And I am here to tell you that I will be better now and in the future about such things. To that end, this virtual desktop deep dive video is done in collaboration with the VR Citizen Discord. We have a new channel where you can help me out directly with videos like these. All of the information in this deep dive is produced and vetted by the VR Citizens themselves. What is the VR Citizen Discord, you ask? The best place to get and give VRSC troubleshooting help, and one of the fastest growing communities in the verse. Check out the links in the description below to go to the Verse Discord. When you get there, hit the check mark to verify your account and get access to all the troubleshooting and chat channels. Then, be sure to go to the Rolls channel, click the bell at the top if you want YouTube and Twitch notifications. If not, be sure to go down and select all the different headsets that you own. That way, we can ping each other to give and get the help we all need. There are over 40 plus modern headsets across six different manufacturers, and I can't possibly keep up and help everyone, especially with equipment that I don't own. But that's where you come in, the VR citizens. The more people that join the Discord, the more headsets and help we can give and get, and the more data that CIG can use to make Star Citizen the best VR game of all time. And yes, CIG devs are hanging out around here and listening to your opinions. So, let your voices be heard over at the Verse Discord, the best place for VR citizens. With all of that out of the way, it's now time for the Virtual Desktop Deep Dive. First of all, some of you might be asking, what is Virtual Desktop and why would I need it when the meta software exists and doesn't cost me anything? The short answer is, Virtual Desktop exists only because the meta software doesn't work so well for so many people that some of those people made their own software to do the exact same thing, but better. And now they are selling that software because it is that much better. If meta would spend any amount of money making the PC to VR experience any better, then Virtual Desktop in its entirety would not be needed nor exist. However, this is not the world we live in. If you want a program that is built by VR nerds for VR nerds that gives your MetaQuest headset access to all the horsepower that they should be able to work with natively out of the box, then Virtual Desktop is the program for you. So, question, does Virtual Desktop work with both wired and wireless connection? Answer, yes, kinda. In my previous video, I said that Virtual Desktop can do both types of connection, and I was technically correct. The best kind of correct. But I didn't fully explain. For virtual desktop to work with a wired connection, you will need to convert a Cat5 cable into a USB-C. They sell these devices on Amazon and you can find a full setup tutorial about that type of connection in the description below, as I haven't actually bought or used one of those devices yet. Now, let's get on to buying and installing virtual desktop from the vrdesktop.net website. The first thing you are going to want to do is buy and download it. But the Steam version is free. Why should I buy it? A would-be VR citizen might ask. If we go to the vrdesktop.net website, we will find our answers. The free version on Steam is not the same one that you buy, but instead the classic version of the app. The Steam version will not have all the bells and whistles and software support needed to run anything other than a Rift S. For Meta Quest 1, 2, 3, 3S and Pro users, you will need to get the Virtual Desktop app from the Quest Store in your headset by clicking the link here to be taken directly to the Meta Web Store on your browser. Everybody take note, 
Here on the website is a frequently asked questions portion below the computer requirements. If you are having common issues, check through these first. Next, don't ask for help in the comment section on YouTube. As much as I like people commenting and helping me out with the algorithm, all I'm going to do is say go to the first Discord to get direct help with your issues in the troubleshooting channels there. The YouTube comment section is the worst place to get IT help and the best place to get trolled. And in fact, to make sure that everybody gets the help they need, I've created a new virtual desktop help channel in the troubleshooting channels on the Verse Discord. Enjoy. Now that you know where to get your questions answered, if you have any issues or trouble with the virtual desktop app, let's get started with downloading and connecting it. Downloading the app. After you've purchased the app, you will need to download the virtual desktop streamer app at the top of the website and have that installed on the PC that you are running Star Citizen on. We will go step-by-step -step process from virtual desktop's own Discord for the install process. If you need any direct help with the app itself and not how it works with Star Citizen, be sure to head over to the virtual desktop Discord and get one-on-one -on -one personal help with the technical expert with the technical experts over there. Step one, you're going to want to wire your computer to your router with an ethernet cable. We do not provide support for computers using only Wi-Fi or the Windows Mobile Hotspot feature. So the gaming PC that will be running Star Citizen has to be directly wired into your router. You cannot get around this. Download and install the streamer app on your PC from virtualdesktop.net. So what they mean is this. Go ahead and save it, set up and run. Okay, so next install. Okay, boom, and it is done. Hit the finish with the check mark to launch virtual desktop streamer. This is the virtual desktop streamer app. This is going to control everything that goes in and out of your headset to and from your computer. So set your preferred codec here to H264 plus, then go to the OpenXR runtime and set it as VDXR. If you wanted to still use Steam VR for whatever reason, you can select that here. So now that we are in here, you can check for updates. You can check for interfering apps. And then once you have all of your options tested and are ready to roll, go ahead and launch Star Citizen. Go over to the cockpit and run. Uh, oh, so I could use pass through, yeah? Just, hey, cool, cool, cool. All right, so let's come over here. <clears throat> All right, so now back over here. Resume. All right. Now that we are in the desktop, OpenXR runtime is set for virtual desktop. We just launch the RSI launcher and launch the game. Be sure that you have set Star Citizen to Vulkan in the game settings menus in graphical options and turn VR on once you have connected your headset to your computer in the new VR options that are in the comms FOIPS head tracking menus. Then as we can see here, everything is working quite nicely, I might add. So as always, go to offline, free flight, and hit security outpost Korea or Jericho. Hop into a Hornet and then test all your controls and make sure all of your HUD and UI works as well as it can for it being a tier zero experimental implementation of VR. And with that being done, hop into the verse and enjoy being a VR citizen. All right, it is actually buttery smooth today. Oh yes. Oh yes, Quest 3 users, you will like this. So, with that being said, let's get to the 
tips and tricks portion of the actual video now that you know the basic connection guide. Thank you for doing the voodoo that you do. Tips and tricks section. All of the best tips and tricks are going to be found over at the Verse Discord and are going to be headset to headset, PC to PC. Everyone's setup is going to be slightly different and have its own issues. But as a general guide, some of the things that you can do to tweak performance would be to change the FOV percent if you have a weaker GPU and need to gain some FPS. You can find those settings here. Only consider using the HVEC or AV1 codecs if you are constrained by our slower network speeds. And speaking of speeds, let's talk about bitrate caps. <clears throat> Virtual desktop caps bitrate at 500 megabits for Quest 3 and 400 for Quest 2 when using the H264 Plus codec. For every other codec, it caps it at 200. With the Oculus Debug tool, there isn't a hard cap, but I've never been able to push HVEC on Quest 2 over 250 megabits on over 250 megabits bitrate on wireless. Do not try any other encoder than H.264 for wired. This is from somebody else's testing over on the Discord. With that being said, if you go to the help Chachi out with the current video, that person also recommends. Basically, you have the same options in the debug tool for Oculus. This virtual desktop is more user friendly but it comes with upper bitrate caps. Some of the other things that you can do to gain performance or FPS is set the VR frame rate to 60 FPS and work your way up as needed. You can ask some of the other Discord users how to bring up the streaming options, but from here you can mess with settings such as FPS VR frame rate, advanced options such as Snapdragon super resolution, as well as enable and disable the synchronous space warp options here. They also have VR graphics quality presets that will allow you to select your graphics card type of quality that you wish to try to use. With that being said, again, the best place to get all your virtual desktop questions answered is going to be here in the new virtual desktop help channel in the Discord. So if there's any super technical issues or questions that you want about Wi-Fi and whatnot, uh, please go there and ask away. Uh, with that being said, the last few things I'll want to note are some of the little tiny things that the people here helping me make this video wanted me to mention, such as some from Slightly Scorpio. Some people never update their PC and net dot framework, and it's not your fault the quest there, and it's not your fault their quest isn't working. It was plug and play for me. So yeah, this guy has some information on how to use it with controllers and gamepad. Let's see here. Unfortunately, it seems like MetaLink is just not a competitor anymore, even with the fiber optic link cable. Results were pretty subpar for me compared to VXDR on a shitty Wi-Fi connection that isn't close or dedicated. I'm getting really good stuff with the general wireless and all my data rates maxed using the AV1. This guy has a tri-band Wi-Fi 7 2.5 on its way, which will be dedicated for the Q3 uh, with a computer with 2.5 gig. So that's also another thing that people are recommending is that some huge VR nerds have a dedicated router specifically that they use only for the Wi-Fi and VR connection there. And they'll have that in the room that they do VR. So another tip that you could do for that. So with that being said, if you have any more questions, drop by the virtual desktop help channel and ask away there. <sighs> I think that is about it and that wraps it up. So trying to keep these videos short as I could talk about VR Citizen for hours and hours, but we'll leave that for the live stream over on Twitch. Speaking of which, if you see me go live over there, come by and say hello there and hang out for a bit. We'll be ramping, we will be ramping up the Daymar rally practices in the next few weeks as we prepare for the big event on the 24th of January. See you all at the finish line. Till next time, as always, Stay safe, fly right, I'm Chachi Sanchez, y'all have a good night. Nice, not bad, not bad at all. Oh yeah. Which reminds me, I have something here for you.